Um, and this, which is relative to the interview that's coming up, Sean, the government's three waters to five waters is a classic move of deception by creating something extreme, then rejecting it as uh, a means to making something else seem more palatable. Cabinet will reject the two new waters and opt only for the original three waters as the better option. No, they won't. They're going all the way. Um, and let's talk about this because on our opinion spot, we have republished from the um, Bash Brat Bassett Hyde website a piece uh, by Michael Bassett, former Labour Cabinet Minister, uh, Professor of History, and banned by the Herald for speaking his truth uh, a year or two back, um, but still a contributing writer on, on the platform, Dr. Michael Bassett. And he joins us. He joins us now. Uh, Michael, lovely to have you on the platform. Thank you for taking the time. Pleasure. All right. Well, Michael, we a have... Miser been... Miserable morning here, but... Uh... Oh. <laughs> All right. Look, we have been... I've been surprised, to be honest, that the mainstream media, and it will take them a while, as it often does, have not picked up on the report back of the Select Committee on Three Waters, which is a drastic and extreme expansion of what were already contentious proposals around the management of water resources in this country. Three Waters has become Five Waters, and iwi or designated Maori groups now get a policy, a completely unmoderated policy or strategy-making uh, power. Um, firstly, have we misinterpreted just how significant these changes are, do you think, Michael? I'm not sure that you've misinterpreted anything. Uh, what I've been listening to what you've been saying, and that sounds uh, to me about it. I mean, Three Waters is first, last and foremost about tribalism. Um, the intention is to uh, try uh, by Māori to get control of water and all of the powers attached there too. But it's more than just tribalism, it's Tainui tribalism. And uh, that is what is going on. Uh, we've actually got a minister who is Tainui, uh, who comes from a long line of people whose prime purpose in life seems to have been to promote Tainui. And they've hit on a device um, uh, presented by the one instance or two instances of problems with water uh, of seizing control of water for the whole of the country uh, and uh, under the, in the process, managing to slide tribal rule and more particularly Wainui, uh, uh, Waikato Tainui, Tainui yeah. tribalism uh, into the whole thing. And someone yesterday said it was a treaty settlement, uh, settlement dressed up as infrastructure reform. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, they've had their treaty settlement and uh, uh, that was back about uh, 25 years ago. And uh, it was full and final, uh, a phrase that appears in treaty do settlement documents, which uh, most Māori these days want to forget. Yeah. Look, Michael, the other problem is it is part of a well-enshrined, and it would seem to me um, ever more, I don't know, structured approach to an interpretation of the treaty. Uh, and I note that, you know, the, the treaty is to be given effect, not to be, you know, held in regard in regards to, to water management. But essentially, this government seems to be dedicated to creating two governments in New Zealand, to creating what um, ACT calls the ethno-state. Yes. Well, Led, I think um, whoever used that phrase in ACT is uh, absolutely right. David Seymour, um, yeah. Y yes, well, there isn't any doubt about it that uh, uh, they are trying to structure a world where 17% of the population, uh, with a fair wind behind them, it's not quite 17%, actually enjoy 50% of the control of New Zealand and 100% control of water and uh, other things, all the things that would give them total control. 
And uh, so you, you, you <laughs> it's really not got anything to do with fixing water problems. I mean, Hastings' water problems can be fixed without an enormous problem around the country, uh, something that ties in every single borough and, uh, well, there are no longer boroughs. I'd, I got rid of them. Mm. Um, uh, every single local government uh, entity, uh, it's not about that. Mm. Uh Michael, the other amazing thing to me is that these things are, or if the mainstream media were doing their job properly, would be contentious. They are already causing, I, I, I think, problems for the government and its popularity and its poll rating. But Nanaya Mahuta seems to wield an enormous amount of power in regards to this. Why do you think that is? And I would ask people to remember that you were part of a Labor government previously that had internal problems and, um, and tensions as well? Well, this government doesn't have uh, uh, enough problems internally, it seems to me. Uh, what gets me is that you've got 64 bunnies uh, who seem to be, uh, have had the wool completely pulled over their eyes. Um, a lot of low-level lawyers um, and people who know almost nothing about New Zealand history and certainly nothing about Maori history. And uh, that's a real problem. They're, they're youngish also. And, of course, uh, history has been taught deplorably uh, both at uh, school and increasingly, sad to say, university level in the country. So you've got a, a, a caucus of bunnies and uh, that's the problem. They can't see what Nanaya is actually doing. Okay. Can it be stopped? And will it be stopped when we have, you know, the major opposition party likely to lead the government next time, which uh, I'm just going to be honest, seems somewhat reluctant to engage in a meaningful way on these issues. And when you ask Mr Luxon about it, if he's got time between serving um, fries and burgers, um, he says, <laughs> I'm learning to rayo. Yeah, well, uh, his problem, uh, and, uh, you know, I don't want to uh, maximise it, uh, but but his real problem has been that he's been out of the country for so long uh, prior to uh, taking charge of Air New Zealand that he's just missed a huge amount of what has gone on. And uh, in particular, I'm talking about the inventions that uh, some quite malicious people have been engaged in uh, with treaties, the treaty. I mean, the treaty that uh, is being talked about by Waikato Tainui and by this government is not the treaty that was signed in 1840 at all. It's um, uh, a, a whole sort of jerry-built structure that's cantilevered out over nonsense. And um, he doesn't know all of that because he's been missing from the country for too long. All right. How do we solve this problem? Because it would seem to me we are locked in a forever war over interpretation of the treaty until, to be frank, someone says this document was never intended to form the basis and foundation for a, fo a functional, diverse 21st century country. Well, I don't know how you do that. I mean, you've got well, you to get rid a, of it. You, you, you have a constitution, don't you? Well, I wouldn't uh, go for a constitution. You would have. Uh, I mean, New Zealand is blessed by the fact that it doesn't have too rigid a constitution. Uh, as soon as you start getting something like uh, the American structure. Oh, my Lord, just imagine the debates that would go on if it taken until 2050 to actually get the Constitution into place. Um, what you've got to have, it seems to me, is uh, a willingness to go back to what the treaty was uh, in what was signed in, 19, in 1840. And it's a, quite a simple document. I mean, it's, uh, uh, it's three clauses. I forget how many words uh, are in it, but it's not much. Mm. And um, set aside all of the nonsense that has been structured about partnership and so on, all of which is uh, jerry-built and uh, um, it deliberately misleads uh, you over what 
at uh, uh, a 1987 Court of Appeal finding um, had in it. And you've got to get a government that is strong enough to, uh, as, as David Seymour seems to have said, um, to um, uh, reject any notion of uh, uh, an ethnocentric state. Mm. Uh, I guess, though, too, we get the narrative very strongly, and particularly from our legacy media, Michael, that this is the price that the um, descendants of evil white colonisers have to pay for the, for the sins of their forefathers. Oh, what a pile of hogswash. Um, I mean, uh, colonisation, uh, yes, it brought some big changes to Maori society, but don't forget, they couldn't read and write. Uh, they didn't have a legal system. They fought each other deaf, dumb and blind during the musket wars uh, of the 20, 1820s and 30s. Māori actually killed one third of their entire population. That point isn't uh, mentioned. And, Imagine that's uh, not on all... the new school history syllabus either, is it? No, but it's all absolutely demonstrable. I mean, we, we have all the evidence for it. Um, and anybody listening, just get a copy of Ron uh, Crosby's Musket Wars, uh, the Musket Wars. But uh, if you don't even want to do that, have a look at uh, Michael King's uh, History of New Zealand, Keith Sinclair's History of New Zealand. I mean, it's all there uh, in black and white. Um, so uh, what happened with colonisation, to come back to your original point, um, was that uh, a system... A legal system emerged slowly. Yes, um, a lot of land was grabbed, particularly after the wars in the 1860s. And yes, uh, some things uh, like Parihaka uh, are stains on uh, colonisation. But having said that, the stains on colonisation uh, uh, that Māori wrought upon themselves uh, uh, is uh, are certainly uh, um, well, huge by comparison. Mm. Michael, it is always... And of course, yeah. Yeah. Carrie, I mean, if you think no. to an educational system, I mean, what Māori actually uh, uh, used to encourage teachers uh, to strap kids to stop them uh, being taught in Māori in the 1860s and 70s and 80s the parents wanted their kids to learn English, mm. the language of colonisation. Yeah. Uh, Michael, do you think Five Waters, as we're now calling it, can be turned around? Well, yes, it can. If, if the uh, Labour caucus would only read the flaming thing and read a bit of history and uh, realise what is happening, is that likely to happen? No. Sadly, uh, the, but the sooner the Labour Party, uh, the current Labour government is put out to grass, the better it'll be for all of us. That's a good spot to end on. Uh, always uh, good talking to you, uh, Dr Bassett. I thank you very much indeed for your time this morning and your excellent column, uh, which we've republished on the Platform Opinion site, and I encourage people to get along and read. That is uh, Dr Michael Bassett, uh, former Labour Cabinet Minister, Professor of History... Um, writer and thinker and person, banned person, banned by the Herald. Herald editor says we'll never publish what he says again. Well, that's open, tolerant and free, isn't it? Incredibly. Le yet you publish Chanel Lal. I'm not calling on Chanel to be cancelled. I'm just calling on him to think more and not be such an idiot.